In this episode of The Russell Brown Show, I'm going to be demonstrating some of my favorite basic tips and techniques for working with the new Puppet Warp tool found here inside of Photoshop CS5. Now, of course, the Puppet Warp tool is very different than what you may be familiar with, for example, with Liquify. As you recall in the past, with Liquify, you could move something around just like this, but it really didn't have control over bending things as if they were a puppet. And that's what we've got, and it's great. Let's get started. But before I do that, let me point out that this particular image is courtesy of my friends at the iStock Photo Library. And I would also like to point out that I've deleted the background around this puppet, as you see here, so it's floating on transparency. And this is the best way to work when working with a project like this. Turning my background back on, just like this, let's get started. My puppet layer is targeted. I now go to my edit menu and down here to this new tool called Puppet Warp right here. When you start your project, you'll see that a mesh will appear over your object. And of course, in this case, it's moving around the silhouette and contours of my puppet that of course I extracted from its background. You can turn this mesh on and off here in the options bar just by clicking on this checkbox. I find it's easier to work on a project like this while the mesh is off. Also, I'd like to point out you can adjust the density of this mesh. Here, in the options bar again, I can have fewer points, normal, or more points. Of course, the more points you add, the more control you can have. It also increases the complexity of the calculations necessary to render your finished results. Okay, I'm going to select normal. What the heck is expansion right here? Its current default is 2 pixels. I really recommend staying with the default. If you increase this value, you can see that it starts to spread and increase the region around the selected model in this case. You can get different results when bending and twisting your model with an expanded region around it, but I find the default works really the best. So I'm going to put this back to its default of 2 and leave it at its recommended value. OK, let's hide the mesh here in the options bar by checking this box. And now let's get started. To do that, you move your cursor down into your work area and you see this icon, which lays in these pins or control points. I can click on my model like this and I can make multiple control points. If I only have two control points and I click on one, it will then rotate around the other. So in order to get more control, you need to add more points. I continue to add points here on my model at key areas, in this case at the joints where I want them to move, just like this. Now if I move this arm once again, you can see that it moves a bit like rubber. But check it out. If I move it, it also seems to move the left arm and the right arm at the same time. If you want to lock things down so they don't move, put in another point. For example, here, as I place a point in his shoulder and then move this again, it then does not move that other arm as much. You can add points and also subtract points. I'm going to use the Option or Alt key, then click on this point when I see the scissors appear and I've deleted it. I'm going to put an additional point right here in his shoulder. Then I want to show you something else. If I click here on his hand and move this, notice that it then bends and twists the arm and it almost looks like it's made out of rubber, when in fact it's supposed to be made out of wood. If I move this up here like this and then go over here to my mode adjustment under my options bar here, I can then click to set this to rigid. Check this out. Did you see that? It gives a little bit more rigid quality to the bend in his arm. And also, check this out if I select Distort. Distort, then, will distort the arm and make it smaller as I move closer to the other points or larger as I move farther away from the other points. Really, really nice capability. Now notice also that the mode adjustment is global. So it's going to adjust and affect the entire model with distortion. I'm going to set this back to normal for this particular project. And I want to delete 
this point in the arm by holding down the Option or Alt key. Delete that point because I want to show you something else. To get even more control, I once again hold down the Option or Alt key and I move a little bit farther away from the pin to see this control ring appear. I can then click and hold and then I can rotate right around that point. Now notice up here in the options bar, it used to say auto and it now says fixed. That means I'm setting up a fixed rotation for that particular point and I can even enter in values just like this, entering 45 because I want a 45 degree rotation. And that's fixed there and will hold that position. If I add additional points, and as you can see in this case, I can then also fix that rotation point just like this. Now check this out. Here's a really interesting use of that mode adjustment we saw earlier. From normal, I'm going to select distort. It now appears as if this model has muscles. Once again, with the Option or Alt key, I can then flex the muscles simply and easily by moving it in this fashion. Really interesting. Let's do that same thing down here with his leg, the Option or Alt key. Let's rotate one leg behind the other, just like this. In fact, that didn't go behind the other leg, and I wanted it to go behind the other leg. In order to control the positioning of the different parts of this mannequin, you can control its depth or pin depth. I'm going to select this knee in the background right here. Then here from the options bar, I can choose between these two different icons, bringing the pins forward or sending the pin back. In this case, I want the knee to come forward. Clicking once seems to bring it forward, but you may have to select this multiple times. And also, for additional control, you may have to add more points in order to get more accurate control of positioning of two layers next to each other. Here's a keyboard shortcut to remember. If you select the open and close brackets from your keyboard, you can also adjust this. I'm selecting the open bracket from my keyboard and I can send that point back. If I select the closed bracket from my keyboard, I can of course bring that knee forward just like this. Excellent. Let's now move forward. I'm going to select my Enter key to resolve my model down just like that. Now I'd like to show you a really interesting feature. I'm turning on this second layer of this text. Now this is a smart object, which I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click here in this blue space next to the text and I'm going to rasterize this layer. Because I know I need to rasterize my text in order to warp it. If I go to the edit menu and down here to puppet warp, something interesting is going to happen. I'm going to show my mesh again because I now have four unique mesh areas. Because of course each of these letter forms are not touching each other and they're separate elements. What makes this great is that I can go in and lay in a pin in each one of these and I can move these uniquely and separately from each other. So I can design with type with this tool and move each individual letter. Then on top of that, if I add additional control points, as you see here, and then I go up here under the mode and select distort, I can get some really interesting effects that can happen with my warping text, just like this. Let's go ahead and add in some warp to this. And finally, with my letter P, let's add a little warp. And of course, I'm only scaling it right now. I'm not getting enough warp to this letter P. I need to add in that third point to get a true warp to start to happen on each of these shapes, just like this. And then finally, once again, I can hit my Enter key, and it warps those. Okay, there you've seen some really interesting and basic uses for the new Puppet Warp feature found here inside of Photoshop CS5.